Hello there. So it's carpet racing season time for me and my second favorite class on carpet. Uh, my favorite class on carpet when I'm not racing two wheel drive short course is mini B. So a couple of years ago, me and a buddy, uh, he had an outdoor track. I had an outdoor track. We decided together to start an indoor mini B racing program. And we came up with a set of rules that said it had to be uh, spec. So that meant no aftermarket parts with the exception of we provided part numbers for carpet tires. If you chose to use carpet tires, you had to use the Proline carpet tires. And um, the batteries aren't that great in these cars. So we provided uh, specs for aftermarket batteries if you chose to get aftermarket batteries. After that, you could set the car up, you know, for racing you weren't allowed to use aftermarket parts. So um, diffs, of course, need to be rebuilt and shocks need to be rebuilt. And that's what the purpose of today's video is. Somebody just asked me, show it to William, hey man, since you're rebuilding those shocks, could you do a video on it? So here we are, I'm gonna do a video on it. Uh, if you caught yesterday's video, comparing the Mini B to the Mini GRXT, you'll know that I whined and pontificated about the misery of rebuilding shocks that don't have a bleeder cap with a bleeder screw to let the air out and shocks that need to be filled from the bottom. So in order to do this, you need a couple of tools. I would say three tools. One, shock pliers. Shock pliers are great because they are coated and you won't mar or scratch up your shock shafts. If you hold the shock shaft with pliers to get the bulk up off the bottom, you can scratch up, scratch up the shaft. If you scratch the shaft, it will nick the uh, rubber O-rings inside the cap and cause leaks. So you want a set of shock pliers. The shock pliers have multiple things in them to help you um, get the job done. One, they have a ball cap or a ball stud tool to pop ball studs out of uh, the ball cups. Um, these slots here are typically used for holding the shock body. There's a slot in the, in the arms of the shock pliers and you can put your shock bodies in there like that. Um, these holes up here, these are for holding the shock bodies themselves. Now, this is intended for 10th scale and 8th scale. So they don't really hold the 16th scale shock bodies too well, but, but they still do. So you can put the shock body in there like that and hold it, free up your hand while you're putting the, um, the cap and the shaft back in. The most important part are the grooves found at the top of the pliers up here. These are where the shock shaft goes so that you can clamp down onto the shock shaft on the pliers, hold it while you remove the, uh, the ball cap and without scratching up the shaft. So shock pliers, if you are going to rebuild your shocks on a regular basis, these tools are pretty invaluable. I don't remember them actually coming with instructions to tell you what all the things do, but with if you if you just pay attention and look, you'll see, okay, there's a bunch of holes here. They must be there for a reason. There's slots here. They must be there for a reason. Um, YouTube maybe has some, some videos. See how nicely that fits in there to hold it? So they're uh, a multi-function, multi-purpose tool. Uh, these happen to be ProTech, sold by A-Main. Love them. Um, let's see the next tool specific for the mini B shock building or rebuilding process is a five millimeter socket. This comes in handy for inserting or removing the cap from the bottom of the body. It has a nut basically molded into the bottom of the shock body. And rather than putting pliers on that and marking that all up or rounding the corners, you just use a 
Once the ball cup is removed from the bottom, you take a socket, place it over the shaft, and now you can gently tighten that cap into the shock body or remove it as well. Pretty invaluable for the bleeding process. Third, and this is a tool not everyone possesses, and it's what makes this uh, process difficult and why I think most people don't bother doing it, and that is patience. Man, it takes a lot of patience to learn to bleed these shocks. And you will get better in time, but you won't get better if you don't do it. It's like anything else. You get better with practice. You learn with time and experience how much to fill the body with oil so it doesn't all pour out all over the place and waste a bunch of oil. You learn how long to wait for the air bubbles to come out of the shock body before um, fighting with the cap to get the air out. The only way to get better at rebuilding shocks is to rebuild shocks. So, uh, what am I doing here? I have... Yeah, 40 for the back. So, because my, my cap is cracked. So, I put a... F anyway, that doesn't matter. Uh, so, I'm using a TLR. 45 in the front and 40 in the back. Trying not to make too much of a mess here. There we go, made a mess. Come on. I'm not used to doing this for the camera, so I'm really struggling to pour it without making a mess. Here we go. And it's kind of running off the side of the cap, not out the bottle. All right, so this, this is a Techno wrench. It's a wheel wrench, but it's also a, uh, a shock building tool as well, if you know how to use it for shock building. It's the uh, only good thing I got out of my Techno experience. Just kidding. Nothing wrong with Techno. Techno. Heck no. All right. So, I have overfilled it, and that will result in a little bit of a mess <clears throat> when I put the, um, the cap in. So, the cap on, gently let the oil overflow. I'm going to put it on just a couple of threads, just so it's held into the body of the shock. And then I'll start to work the piston up and down. Slow, that's pushing out extra oil. It's working out some air. You feel the air on the way back up. Again, that feeling the air as you pull the piston back up, that's an experience thing. It comes with time. You get to know... The how it feels when there's air in there and when there's not. Tighten a little bit more. Push the piston down again. I like to leave the piston down and then tighten it. Okay. It pushed the piston back to the, well, technically bottom, but since I'm holding it this way, the top. <laughs> All right, so right now, the shock body has got air trapped in it because I cannot compress that shaft. So there's too much pack, there's too much air. I'm going to loosen the collar, or the insert, shock cartridge technically just enough so I can start to compress that shaft Let's 
try and squeeze the air out. Slowly pull it up, push it back down. It's bouncing back, so the air is not escaping out of the body yet. There we go. A little bit of oil came out. I'll tighten it again. Air and oil have escaped. All right. So now it's a little bit better. I can compress it about halfway. First time, I couldn't compress it at all. Here's where it becomes tedious and time consuming. Repeat until you can compress it the whole way. Loosen the cartridge insert, push the shaft down. It bounces back, push it a little bit more, loosen the cartridge and then push the shaft again. Loosen the cartridge, push the shaft again. Shaft doesn't come back up. Tighten the cartridge. More oil has worked its way out. Almost there. Still, there's still air trapped in here. We're close. See, every time we're getting a little closer. So now this is the third attempt. Loosen the cartridge, push the shaft. And tighten it again. Rebound. Some people set up for rebound. I don't because it's, for me, it's impossible to get them all to rebound the same. But rebound is, watch this. I push the shaft up into the shock, let go, and the pressure inside pushes it back. I don't like that. I, I strive to have no rebound. So I continue to do this process over and over until I can put the, push the shaft all the way to the fullest extent of its travel and it does not rebound. Here we go. So what's this, number four? Still some rebound. Still some air trapped at the bottom. Repeat. The only way to do this is to just keep doing it. And people lose patience and stop. There we go. So I've got some rebound. However, I can finally compress the shaft all the way. We're almost there. Almost there. Well, that might be good enough for the purposes of this video. I can now compress the shaft all the way further than it would actually go with the cup. And 
the spring cup and ball cup on there. So I'll put the ball cup on, the spring cup on, compress it. Oink. So, yeah, there's rebound and may I may live with that. That's what you got to do. You just keep working it and working it until the air comes out and it takes <laughs> takes a while. It really does. But the more you do it, the more you understand it, the easier it gets. So, just be patient, give it time, and you too can bleed bottom fill shocks with mediocre success like me. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye for now.